Secretary Wright, it's great to speak with you today. Welcome. Thanks for having me, Morgan. So I'm here at Brookhaven National Lab on Long Island. Uh, so let's start right there, because you are at Brookhaven National Laboratory. You just put out some news a little while ago about plans to work with uh, and partner with more companies uh, around nuclear fuel. What does that entail? Yes, we've got to stand up the whole supply chain for nuclear in the United States. We really want to get nuclear going again. We've got to have reactor technologies here. We've got to have uranium enrichment. And we've got to have the ability to fabricate fuel that's going to be used in these next generation reactors. So four partner companies were picked that have technologies and interest to invest capital in nuclear fuel. And we're going to, we're going to give them grants and work with them to stand up the nuclear fuel cycle right here in the United States. I think a lot of Americans would be surprised to realize just how reliant the U.S. is on foreign sources of nuclear fuel, including Russia. So how quickly can you bring all of this capacity online? Nothing in nuclear moves super fast, so we are going as aggressively <laughs> as we can. It's, it's, it's going to be two or three years, not two or three months. I wish it was two or three months. But uh, that we have just stagnated our nuclear industry for decades. I am highly convinced the Trump administration and our Department of Energy is making a rapid pivot. We're going to have shovels in the ground and things under construction. But unfortunately, we and Western Europe and, and East Asia are going to be dependent upon enriched uranium from Russia for two or three more years. I wish, I wish it was tomorrow that we didn't need a, a drop of it. Mm. I mean, there's some reports circulating here in the last couple of days that the administration is considering a proposal to divert uh, plutonium, which plays such a central role in U.S. nuclear weapons stockpile, which the Department of Energy also oversees, um, to private sector applications as well. Is there any veracity to that? How to think about it? There is. You can use plutonium as a fuel in these, particularly these next generation reactors that use HALU, a more highly enriched uranium. Uh, we, of course, it's critical for our stockpile, but we have surplus plut plutonium. So that's a very real possibility. We're looking at anything we can do to accelerate the construction of nuclear reactors and to put new power on our grid. Nuclear is the second largest source of U.S. electricity, and it works 24-7 whether the wind is blowing or the sun is shining. So this is electricity that can drive down electricity prices and help us lead the AI race and reindustrialize our country. It's interesting. We've seen a lot of investor appetite, both in public and private markets, around nuclear and other types of new technologies. I'm actually at the Up Summit here in Bentonville, Arkansas, and you have uh, startups that are focused on fusion energy here as well. Billions of dollars in venture capital going into that uh, possibility for the future, too. How to think about the mix, uh, especially when it comes to working with states like New York, where you are right now, and where legislators are actually mapping out their own nuclear strategy today? Yeah, so we'll do everything we can to help New York and any other state that wants to develop new nuclear capacity. There's great interest in that, including in here in New York. But even moving as fast as we can with nuclear, it's still several years away before these reactors come online. But in New York and in the New England in general, uh, more natural gas in the energy system can drive down electricity prices now and lower home, f home fuel, home heating costs. So there's huge upsides to do in the short run, and there's great ideas with nuclear in the, in the medium term. We're for both of them. We're for anything that lowers electricity costs for Americans.